Hey everyone, this is Jane with Barlow Herbal and I've got Dr. Benjamin Hardy back. He is just releasing a brand new book called The Gap in the Gain. And here it is right here. I'm lucky that I have a first copy because Ben, as many of you know, is my nephew. And my sister Susan, who's his mom, gifted me with a with a first book, one of these books. So it's available on Amazon and we'll talk about that uh, at the end. But Ben, always nice to see your cute face. We were having some gushing moments before, before we started recording. But uh, maybe give us a quick, uh, for people maybe who don't know who you are, give us a quick little bit about you and why we should listen to you. Oh, geez. Uh, very <laughs> much happy to be with all of you. I think some of you have seen some of our prior conversations. We talked about personality isn't permanent and things like that. So yeah, happy to be with my Aunt Jane. She's amazing. I, uh, I take Brain Glow every day. So that's why you should listen to me is because I'm on Brain Glow. <laughs> We've been giving LDM to, I've been taking LDM since I was a, a little boy. And, um, you know, our, our kids regularly take LDM. We, uh, we adopted three kids from the foster system uh, back in 2018. And that was a three-year journey, which was totally crazy. Um, took three years to adopt them from the foster system. And then one month after we adopted our foster kids, my wife got pregnant with twins and we had twin girls that same year. So in 2018, we adopted uh, three kids, then had two more. So we had five kids technically in 2018. And uh, we've since had one more little baby boy. And uh, so got six kids. We live in Orlando. Um, I got my PhD in organizational psychology and just, I love writing books. This is, this is uh, my fourth major book. This one's with Dan Sullivan. He's the co-founder of strategic coach, uh, essentially the number one coaching program in the world. Dan is like 78 years old. He's been coaching uh, high level entrepreneurs for 50 years. And Dan and I wrote a book last year that came out called who not how which has now sold over 200,000 copies. And it's just kind of a, a sweet hit classic. But this book right here, The Gap and the Gain, um, it's such a, a fundamental concept. It, 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 it changes how you see everything. And the first time I heard about it from Dan about three years ago, I knew I wanted to one day turn it into a book. And so this just came out this week. And um, you know, we'll, we'll go into the concept a little bit, but this is, this is a fundamental mindset that you're either on or you're off either you're in the gap or you're in the game. And, um, you know, we all, we all have ways of interacting with our life, interacting with our experiences. We have ways of seeing things. And uh, I think that society trains us to be in the gap. Um, society trains us to be in the gap and being in the gap is reactive. Whereas being in the gain is proactive. And when you're in the gain, you, you measure yourself properly and you also transform your experiences powerfully. So, you know, we can go into that, but yeah. The gap in the gain is, is, is how you measure yourself. And it's also how you interact with your life. Yeah. I mean, I think an easy way to look at that for some people is uh, just in a really simplistic way is the glass is either half full all the time, or it's half empty all the time. Um, and that, so that's kind of the gap in the game. But the thing is with this book, you go a lot deeper. And what I love is the very beginning of the book, you talk about the quote from Thomas Jefferson or not the quote, but what he actually wrote in the Declaration of Independence about the pursuit of happiness, which I thought was really interesting that you put that in the very beginning because it's so true. It's like Americans now have all, it, we were set up by that to always be pursuing happiness and not be in happiness in the moment with what we have now and what we, how we see our life. And even if we take something bad that happens to us or something that we think is less than how we would want it to be, we don't look at how it's actually a positive. We don't look at it as something that adds to or at, we're in the gain of that. We look at it as something that's less than, and it's like you said, it's a, it's a big gap. So to me, this, you know, and as you were writing this over this last year, um, some of the conversations we have, uh, honestly, I will tell you, Ben, there's been so many times that I feel like, okay, how is this amazing, smart person that is Ben Hardy, like, I'm so lucky to have you in my life because there'll be things that'll happen. We'll just be on a phone, you know, ch catching up with each other. And it's like, you, you'll re I'll tell you something that's happening and you'll be like, yeah, you need to remember, like you gotta be in the game. Like this is how you would reframe that so that you're in the game. So it's kind of like, I feel like I have a pipeline to like, <laughs> like a guru, <laughs> especially because you're researching all this stuff and you're writing it. So 
So maybe you can just kind of drop some truth bombs about why this mindset can change your life. And not only that, like what are some of the tips and tricks that you can take so that you, when you find yourself in that gap, you can move quickly into the game. Yeah, absolutely. So one thing that's important. So this idea came about um, to Dan, maybe like 25 years ago, because one of the things he noticed and in his coaching company, he coaches very high end, very successful entrepreneurs is that it didn't really matter how much they've achieved. They always felt terrible about their progress. They never felt like they were successful. They never felt like they were actually doing anything. And that's really where it dawned on him that it doesn't really matter what you're accomplishing. If you're always measuring yourself against where you would ideally like to be, you, you then, you don't feel like you've made any progress at all. And your ideals are kind of like a horizon in the desert, right? So like you, there's a horizon out in the future, but it doesn't matter how many steps forward you take towards that horizon. The horizon keeps moving with you. You're never actually closer to the horizon. And that's kind of like your ideals. It doesn't matter where you're at right now compared to your former self. Like I, you know, I'll just use myself as an example. Like I'm so much farther along than I was five, 10 years ago. I'm, you know, have a sweet business. I've got six kids. Like, but if I'm always measuring myself against the horizon, against where my ideals are right now, and my ideals right now are different from my ideals three or four years ago. But if I'm always measuring myself against my ideals, then it doesn't feel like I've made any progress at all. In psychology, they actually call that the hedonic treadmill. And so the problem that Dan discovered is, is that people are measuring themselves inappropriately, incorrectly, and it's making them perpetually miserable. And it makes them think that, you know, at some point it actually destroys you from wanting to make progress at all. And so the gap is when you're measuring yourself against your ideal. And so when you're measuring yourself against your ideal, it really doesn't matter where you're at. <laughs> you're, you're not making progress because your ideal keeps moving. And, and so the antidote is obviously that you measure yourself against the gain. The only accurate and healthy thing that you as a person can measure yourself against is your former self. That's the only thing you should measure yourself against is where you were before. The only thing that Benjamin Hardy can measure myself against accurately is Benjamin Hardy last week, last month, last year. It would make zero sense for me to measure myself against you, Jane. Like we don't have the same starting points. Like we come from totally different places. And so why should I measure myself against you? That puts me in the gap. And so it's not just about how you measure your own progress, but it's about how you also measure experiences. Like as an example, you know, my kids could come down to the kitchen table and my wife's made dinner. And sometimes this has happened where it's like, they come down to the table and they're like, oh, it's not what we wanted. And like, in that case, they're measuring what is against an ideal in their head against, you know, what they wish it was. And so they're in the gap. And there's a great quote from Greg McEwen. He says, if you, you know, if you, um, oh gosh. I forgot the quote now. I've said it like three times today, but um, we might just have to, I don't know if we can edit this. We probably can't, right? Uh, yeah, we can. We don't need to. It's all no, good. No, we can tell, but that's so funny because Ben, all the, all the videos you've done, you've never been stumbled up on a quote. You're like the quote master. Yeah. <laughs> I think he said, if you focus on, here it is. He says, if you focus on what you lack, you lose what you have. But if you focus on what you have, you gain what you lack. We don't need to edit it. We're good. So, but, so what, um, do you, what do you do when your kids come down and say that? Do you, how do you frame it for them? Well, the great part is, is that you have language, you know, it's like, are you in the gap or are you in the gain? You know, like if you're in the gap, you're measuring your life yeah. or you're measuring yourself or you're measuring your situation against what you ideally wish it was. Um, and that obviously then makes you feel terrible. It puts you in a losing proposition, no matter what you've gained. Um, it doesn't matter how great your life is. It doesn't matter where you're at because you're measuring it against the ideal, which is perfection and which is impossible to actually achieve. You've now put yourself in a losing position and you feel like crap, no matter how, what, what, what you're dealing with. One other super important thing though, um, that's important to realize is experiences like you, you and I are having a different experience right now, even though we're having a zoom conversation. And even if anyone's listening to this, they're having their own experience. No one can access my experience and I can't access your experience. And when you're in the gap, you let your experiences happen to you. You know, it doesn't really matter what happens. You're in the passenger seat of your experiences. You're passive. You're not active. Whereas if you're in the gain, you get to determine the meaning of your experiences. You get to decide what do I want this experience to mean? And you turn every experience into a gain. This is actually how you transform trauma because a trauma occurs because something happened, it was painful. And because it happened, 
you actually feel like you're worse off because it happened. You feel like it was a downside. You're, you know, you're measuring the experience against what it should have been or what it could have been or what it, it's all about how you frame it. But when you're in the gain and you actually say, my experiences don't happen to me, I happen to my experiences. I'm the only person who has access to my experiences. I am the only person who, I, I get to take ownership of my experiences. And so then rather than being in the gap, you turn it into a gain. You actually say, what, what did I learn from this? How can I be better as a result? And in psychology, post-traumatic growth means that you actually had an experience. You have value in the experience. If you're in the gap, you've devalued the experience even like the high achievers, they've devalued all their progress because they're measuring it against an ideal. So with trauma, you had an experience that you devalue, you wish hadn't happened and you feel like you're worse off because it happened and you're in pain and why did it have to happen to me? Whereas when you're in the gain, you're actually glad the experience happened. You learn from the experience and you feel like your current self is better off and more capable because the experience happened. You might've had something bad truly happen but you're now grateful for it and you've turned it into massive learning and growth and you genuinely feel like your current self is better off than your former self before the experience. That's how you know you've transformed a trauma and that's when you've taken agency over your experiences. So how do you, um, how do you start the process of being able to reframe, reframe trauma like that? Because for some people, I think they like to live, well, I wouldn't say they like to, but I think it starts to identify them and they get attention, they maybe get pity, they get, they get, um, they've never had the experience of being able to reframe a trauma where it actually gives them a lesson and gives them a learn. It gives them a, a gain in their life instead of like, how, how does a person who's never, ever lived in the game, even with little things, let alone some big traumatic thing, how do you I wouldn't start to- big. Let's start small, tiny That's habit I mean. style. So, so yeah. So like the first step is honestly learning how to evaluate your days. So like, as an example, today is a day, whatever, however we're watching it. And let's just say I had three items on my to-do list today and I only nailed one of them. I only knocked out one thing. It was busy. I got lost or maybe I got distracted or just, you know, so am I going to frame today as a failure and just say it didn't go right? Or am I going to choose to frame today as a win? I get to decide the meaning of today And so the best thing is, is on a daily basis, just to choose at least three wins for the day, you know, and it doesn't matter if those were the three wins you were going for, but actually at, you know, and there's a lot of research on this rather than keeping your phone on airplane mode, or rather than looking at your phone at the end of the day and staring at the screen, which is, you know, what 90% of people do in bed, right before bed, airplane mode, your phone, pull out your journal. A lot of research shows that gratitude right before bed, literally just writing down three things you're grateful for at the end of the day, takes two minutes, improves your happiness fundamentally and improves your sleep quality. Well, something that's really cool about the gain is, is it's not just about gratitude. When you just list three things, three wins for the day, that could be just that you actually learned something. Like maybe, maybe the whole day went to scrap and it didn't actually go how you planned, but what can you actually learn from that so that you can be better Um, you're either winning or you're learning, you know, and all of that's gains. And so if you just write down three things that you got after today, then today was a win. You've contextualized it as a win. And that not only builds your gratitude, but it builds your confidence. And it also allows you to frame your day as a gain that today you are further along than you were at the end of the day or at the end of yesterday, you did make progress. Maybe it didn't go how you planned, but you are further along. You are gaining And that just allows you to, again, inflate the value of your experience, but also it allows you to take ownership of your narrative of your past. Why would you want a devalued negative past? Why would I want to take today and make it a loser day when it's up to me how I choose how to frame it? That again goes to the idea that it's my choice how I frame my day. Jane, you have no access to my day. At the end of my day, it's only up to me how I decide to frame it. And so why would I frame it as a negative devalue my past? What's that going to do for my confidence tomorrow? What does that do for me at all? Nothing. It's, it's, it's unhealthy. So, I mean, why not just frame my day as a gain, learn from it, be better as a result, and then just go on tomorrow and create more gains tomorrow. Yeah. So what would you say with people? Like, so say someone's in a household or relationship or uh, their kids, their teenagers, whatever. And um, you like there's a, there's a negative thing coming. Like you, you talk about each other, say people at the end of the day, talk about their day with each other, which I think a lot of families do. And I think it's really good. And I, but I also think that, I mean, I personally know um, people in particular, a really good friend of mine, she has two teenage boys and the 
one of them is becoming very, very difficult and being very teenage. He's, you know, he's 18, I think, and he's close to, you know, he's a senior and he's just being the most difficult and it totally ruins my friend's day and her husband, because here's this teenager who's like, I don't know if this even applies, but how, how do you help a, 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 a really teenager frame their day so that it doesn't affect you? Like, to me, that is, well, here's point number one. Okay. And I don't know if that's a good example of, no, I think it's a phenomenal example. I think that point number one is, is that you do get to a point where you realize, yeah, you can be, you know, other people do impact us, but at the end of the day, it's your choice, how you interpret everything. So a really great quote is you never actually see the outside world. You only see your reaction to it. And yeah. so you can never actually say that the child is making you miserable. Like your reaction to the child is what's making you miserable. And so that's how you're contextualizing your child. You're not, you can, if you're blaming your child for your happiness, that goes back to the idea of the gap is reactive. You're letting your experience happen to you rather than you happening to your experience. But I think that the thing that parents, coaches, leaders, teachers, people in general need more than anything is rather than trying to change your child so that they make you happier, you should get out of the gap about your child. And what that means is you're, when you're in the gap, you're measuring them against your ideal of perfection. You're mad at your child because they're not measuring up to what you think they should be. You're in the gap. And so rather than you being in the gap about your child and continually pointing out why they're not being who they're supposed to be according to your ideals, by the way, your ideals are like a horizon in the desert. It doesn't matter what they do. If you keep measuring them in the ideal, you've made success and, and happiness an impossible game for your child or for your employer, for whoever. And so probably rather than trying to get them to change so you can be happy, the better thing that you could do is to help them measure their own progress, help them get in the gain about themselves, help them recognize and see that they're different from their former self. How has that 18-year-old kid improved in the last three months. You know, like that's the gain. What's the gain in your 18 year old kid? Not let's get out of the gap about them. We know that they're not perfect and we, we can keep looking at all the imperfections and keep pointing them out and keep sh living in the gap, or we can actually help that child see their own progress and help them get in the gain about themselves and help the kid measure their own progress rather than trying to measure themselves against the parents' ideals. And I will tell you, um, you know, <laughs> so like as a, a parent of kids who came from the foster system, you know, it's very easy to go in the gap. Um, but so for example, like my 13 year old son, Caleb, we got him into tennis maybe a year and a half ago. And we started getting him into tournaments maybe like nine or 10 months ago. And I remember like me, I'm into coaching. I'm into helping people improve. And when we first got him into tournaments, I, like I would watch him and I would see all the areas where he wasn't doing great. And I would like try to like coach him, like, why aren't you doing this better? And why aren't you doing this better? And, you know, just totally in the gap, you know, and again, you, what, whatever you focus on expands, if you want to see problems, go ahead. Like there's plenty of them out in the world, you know? Um, but once I just helped him start to see his own progress, Caleb, how do you feel like you're doing compared to what you were doing, uh, you know, a week ago? What have you learned in the last week? You know, or how do you feel like you're doing right now compared to where you were at like a month, <clears throat> a month ago or two months ago? What, it, what are you learning? Helping him see his own progress, helping him measure backwards. That's what gain, being in the game is, is Caleb measures himself against Caleb. He doesn't measure himself against his dad's opinion. My, my opinion of Caleb's progress is fundamentally less important than his opinion of his own progress. And so if Caleb's measuring himself against Caleb a month ago or two weeks, you know, or three months ago, yeah, he can see that he's gotten better at tennis. And that's what he measures himself against, not against me, not against where I want him to be. He measures himself against where he was before. Once he starts seeing his own progress, measuring his own progress, then his confidence will build. Then he'll start making more progress, but it's because he wants it, not because I told him to. Yeah, no, I love that. And besides that, it's kind of like, being able to think in that space where his, his, he gets to determine his own progress and day without any input from you. So I, I think, it I mean, I can help him, but the best thing yeah. I can do for him is to help him yeah. take ownership of his own experience and value his own progress. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that. Well, um, I think honestly, to me, that is like perfect. 
um, I think that those are some nuggets that if, if, if like you understand that you ha are the one that's the master of your own day. Um, you're the master of your own life. You're the master of your own experience. Yeah. You're the master yeah. of your own interpretation. Yeah. And if it, you know, the thing is to do it step-by-step step, a day, one day at a time to say, how am I staying in the game? And to me, what I would say, or what's the gain I can get from, to, from this experience? How can right. I turn this into a gain? Right, right, right. Like to me, that's amazing. Now, as usual, um, you know, every book you write blows me away. And I just kind of go, how, how is this kid <laughs> so amazing? Um, but I know that I know how you're amazing because, you know, I've been with you since you were, you know, I've been your auntie since you were born. But here's the cool thing. I love reading books, but I'm an audible person. This book is brand new out. But the cool thing is, is Ben is on top of things. So this book is already in Audible and you can just go download it. And if you are like me, I love having information and education and just things that I learn in my ear. That's the way I learn. I learn really fast that way. But one of the cool things about what you did with this, I think you did this in the other book you did with Dan, where you actually have the two of you talking. Is yeah, that so right? basically I did record the audio book. So like there's six chapters in this book. Um, but in between each chapter, I actually interview Dan Sullivan himself. And we just, I just let him share his wisdom, his perspectives. And we just kind of riff back and forth between the chapters. I actually just, you know, the book's been out for like two days as, you know, you and I are chatting, Jane, and I just listened to the audio book because it's, it's, I listened to it on like 1.7 or 8 speed. And it takes like three hours to go through the whole book at that speed. And uh, I'm just telling you, these interviews are mind blowing. Like this is a mind, this is a life changing concept and i'm saying i'm not the one who originated i put a lot of the science the research behind it the stories behind it but like just listening even to dan talk and you know this concept i mean if people understood this it would get them out of the gap it would get them out of the comparing in the competing game it would get them away from comparing and measuring their, their lives against ideals that are unachievable and getting them off the rat race and it would also allow them to take ownership of their own experiences, get more learning and growth out of their own experiences and also get out of the gap about other people. And so, um, okay. you know, I, I just think it's a beautiful concept. I actually, for anyone who is an audiobook listener, um, you know, please go get the audiobook. but it is a, it's a game changer being able to listen to Dan teach. Well, and I think too, that during the, the really pivotal times in human history that we live in, that there is a way to actually reframe what is happening and live massively in the game. You know, and I've, I've experienced that personally myself. You, you have the choice. Everything that's going on in your life can either be framed as the gain or the gap. If you're in the gap, you're going to be in the habit of being in the gap about just about everything. How you see anything is how you see everything. Your, you know, your experience is what you choose to pay attention to. And Conversely, everything can be viewed as a gain. Everything, the pandemic, um, you know, a loved one passing away unexpectedly. Like there's a lot of things you cannot predict about life. You cannot predict what's going to happen to you, but you can predict how you frame the experience. And if I can get into the habit and choose to frame my own experiences and take ownership of my experiences and turn my own experiences into gains and be in the gain about everything that happens to me, I'm going to get better and I'm not going to be bitter and my life's going to keep getting better and I'm going to keep learning and I'm going to keep being evolving beyond my former self, no matter what happens. And so if you're at the whims of what happens to you, you're screwed because it's unpredictable what's going to happen in the future. It's unpredictable. And so if you're going to be in the gap and, you know, like choose to be at whims of experiences or events, you're in trouble. But if you choose to take ownership of your experiences, choose to take ownership of your game, of your framing and choose to take every experience and get gains out of it, um, then you're a winner, no matter what you're either winning or you're learning. And you can, if you're going to really learn from every experience and be grateful for every experience and really learn from every experience, you're going to keep evol evolving and advancing. Whereas many people around you are going to not evolve and advance because they're going to keep being in the gap. Yeah, and why would you want to stay stuck in that vortex of everything being so bad? Because I'm telling you on the other side of that, when you live, when you take all any experience that happens to you and anything that's happening in with people, with events, with, with anything, when you reframe it where it's a positive, uh, I'm telling you your life, this one concept can completely shift everything in your life. 
So that's why I think this is a really, really important book. And I, I would challenge anyone who's watching this, who maybe has this thought, okay, I'm listening to this, this sounds really good. I would really challenge you to take action and either get the audiobook or get the hard copy of the book. And like put this into action. If you want your life to change, this one concept is a complete changer for, for anybody. Even if you think you already live in a positive place, this will heighten that and take it to the even to the next level. So Ben, I think you're amazing. And I thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day. I know you have this crazy life and and I thank you because it's like, Sometimes we get these moments where we get to chat uh, just randomly and it's always epic. And I wanted sharing this stuff with people that I love, um, which is all, you know, the, my customers and the people that watch my channel. Um, this to me is the important thing because to me, this is the thing that too that can make a difference in your health. If you look at things, you know, you ate a piece of chocolate cake. Well, here's how I frame that. That was the most delicious thing I've had in a month. And I give every bite love. And it, it, to me, it's like deliciousness. I don't beat myself up when I'm done at all. I'm just like, this is so good. And what happened, like, and I know this kind of, it's maybe on a very tiny scale about something that you eat that you, you know, you should just enjoy. No, you're going to love chapter three of the book, Jane, because uh, <laughs> the whole chapter is about how you contextualize things. Perception shapes biology. Yes, it does. And so how you Absolutely. frame something determines how your body interprets it right. fundamentally. I mean, so yeah, yeah. literally there's a whole chapter in the book on that. I love that. Cause, cause to me, there it is. It's like, oh, and maybe I, after Why I go I in eat the gap about, oh, I ate the cake. Now I'm a loser. Oh, I, I'm going <laughs> to guilt myself now and make myself feel terrible because I did this. And, and now you've just compounded the issue, right? Yeah. And your bi biology is going, oh crap. I just, yeah, oh, oh this. now I did something wrong. Siren signals. Oh, it's. <laughs> I love that. Well, Ben, I love you so much. You have no idea. You have my heart. I love you too. Time. I love you too. And for anyone who's watching this, just the fact that you're, you know, in Jane's ecosystem, thank you. I know that her work is super inspired and beautiful and um, yeah, hopefully you got something out of this. Um, you know, the gap in the gain is just a beautiful high level concept. Um, yeah. And if it resonates, go grab a copy um, and just thank you for listening. Have a great day. Yeah. Thanks everybody. And we'll talk to you soon.